Hello scapers, my name is Kadios and welcome to the Fox Den. This video guide will walk you through the most efficient way to train your smithing from level 1 all the way to level 99 as a free to play regular account or as a free to play Iron Man account. Please be sure to slap the like button to turn it from gray to blue, hit the subscribe button to change it from red to gray, and also ring the bell icon so you can stay up to date whenever my new videos are posted. With that being said, let's get right into it. I'd recommend completing the Knight Sword quest first, regardless of what your account type is, as this quest will grant you 12,725 smithing XP, which will take you from levels 1 to 29 smithing straight away. From here on out, the most efficient way to train smithing as a free-to-play regular account is to purchase various metal bars from the Grand Exchange and smith them into plate bodies. You can make bronze plate bodies at level 29, iron plate bodies at level 33, steel plate bodies at level 48, mithril plate bodies at level 68, and adamant plate bodies at level 88. On the screen now is a spreadsheet that I made to help you better visualize the amount of plate bodies needed to transition between each metal, how many bars that you'll need for each progression, the GP profit or loss of each plate body that's made, the total GP profit or loss from each progression, the XP per hour that that particular plate body yields, and also how long it'll take to advance to the next progression. For all of my numbers, I used the highest buy price on all of the bars and sold the corresponding plate body for the minimum amount to make the numbers as conservative as I could. These numbers reflect the prices as of the posting date of this video. As you can see, you'll lose around 12 million GP going from levels 29 to 88. However, once you hit level 88 and are able to smith adamant plate bodies, you start turning a profit. All in all, after reaching level 99 smithing, it'll cost you around 7.4 million coins. Do note that you're only able to buy 10,000 metal bars every 4 hours due to the grand exchange limits, so make sure you plan accordingly. I'd also recommend buying 5 of each metal bar and one of its corresponding plate body and selling them back to the grand exchange just so you can get the up-to-date numbers and margins to better understand the true profit or loss involved. Once you have some bars purchased, start in Barak West Bank and withdraw a hammer, two energy potions if you'd like, and 25 of whatever metal bar that you'd like to use. Make sure that the hide roofs option is set to off. Click your bar and then click on the anvil just to the south of you to save a game tick when you smith the plate bodies. Click the plate body that you're going to make and your character will start banging them out. Once that's done, turn your run energy on, click the bank, deposit all your plate bodies, and rinse and repeat the process accordingly. If you have energy potions, you can keep your run on for the entire duration of your smithing training. Just make sure that you sip your potion to keep your stamina up. If you train without the energy potions, you're able to make about 620 plate bodies per hour. And with energy potions, you're able to make about 750 plate bodies per hour. Do note, if you plan on maxing out your free-to-play Iron Man regardless of the type it is, I strongly encourage you to train your crafting to level 99 first. If you train your crafting to level 99 first, you'll ultimately reach level 85 smithing from the 248,046 tiaras that you make from that grind. A card will be on screen now to my 1-99 to crafting guide for all free-to-play account types, which I encourage you to watch before hopping into the rest of this smithing guide for the Iron Man. Moving along, for all Iron Man types, you'll be smelting iron ore to iron bars with rings of forging. You'll then smith those iron bars into iron plate bodies all the way to level 99 smithing. In order to make rings of forging, you'll need a cut ruby made by using a chisel on an uncut ruby, along with a gold bar which can be made by using gold ore on any furnace. Have the cut ruby, gold bar, and a ring mold in your inventory, and click on any furnace to make ruby rings. I also recommend training your ranged and melee skills first on creatures like ogre shamans, warriors, or body golems, as they drop many rubies that you'll need for this purpose. 
from levels 85 to 99 smithing, you'll need to obtain 1,834 rubies in addition to 1,834 gold bars to make all of the ruby rings that you need for the smithing grind. I recommend mining your 1,834 gold ore from the crafting guild and then smithing them all in the furnace at Edgeville. Make sure that you walk to the Edgeville furnace on the way to the furnace and run back to the bank once you've made a full inventory of ruby rings. Repeat the process until all 1,834 ruby rings are made this way. Once you have your 1,834 ruby rings, go to the Grand Exchange and withdraw your cash stack and 27 ruby rings. Talk to Murky Matt Runes in Southeast Grand Exchange and have him turn all your ruby rings into rings of forging for 250 GP each ring. You'll need 458,500 GP to turn all your ruby rings into rings of forging. Though, if you trained on ogresses prior to this, you should be in good shape financially. Bank the rings of forging and repeat the process until you have all 1,834 rings of forging made. The most efficient way to train smithing from levels 85 to 99 for all free to play iron men is still iron plate bodies. However, you'll turn your iron ore to iron bars using the superheat item spell. The superheat item spell can be cast with a staff of fire equipped and one nature rune per cast. I'd only recommend this progression if you don't care about training your rune crafting skill in free to play or if you don't care about maxing your account in free to play. Before I show you how to smith with the superheat item spell, you should use up any law runes that you have in order to telekinetic grab nature runes from the wilderness. Big note, I wouldn't recommend getting nature runes in the wilderness if you're a free to play hardcore Iron Man as you could get PK'd and lose your status. But if you're a regular or ultimate free to play Iron Man, it's still risky, but you don't lose risking status if you do die. Equip a Staff of Air and any amount of Law Runes that you're willing to lose if you get PK'd, any food source you wish, and a couple of energy potions if you have them. Head to the position that was on my map to the two Nature Rune spawn area. Cast Telekinetic Grab on each of the two Nature Rune spawns, then hop worlds. Repeat the process until you have as many Nature Runes as you desire. If you do run across a PKer, try to log out as soon as you see a white dot come on your screen. If you get attacked, run south to get to level 20 Wilderness and teleport out if you can. Make sure you take one Fire Rune with you for an emergency Varak teleport. Teleport. If you're able to get attacked by any creatures, do it as it'll get the PKer off of you, perhaps with enough time for you to log out. Make your way to the two iron ore rocks located on my minimap. The best way to get here would be to go down the stairs in the house to the right of the Falador party room and make your way over. Make sure you have your entire nature rune stack, a hammer, and the best pickaxe you can wield in your inventory, and make sure you have a staff of fire equipped. Mine an iron ore, then cast the superheat item spell on the iron ore to turn it into an iron bar. Then mine another iron ore, and then superheat. Repeat this process until you have an entire inventory of iron bars filled up. Walk over to the anvil just to the northwest and bang out 5 iron plate bodies. Turn your run energy on and go back to mine and superheat another full inventory of iron bars and repeat the process. Make sure that you drop your 5 iron plate bodies on the way back to the iron ore rocks. You'll need to ultimately make and drop 51,352 iron plate bodies, which means in total you'll need to mine 256,760 iron ore, and you'll also need to have 256,760 nature runes for all of the superheat item casts that you do during this grind from 85 to 99 smithing. Start in Falador East Bank, run south, and climb down the ladder to enter the mining guild. Note that you'll need to have level 60 mining in order to access the guild. Head over to the four iron ore rocks just to the east of the ladder. Mine each of the iron ore starting with the numbers 1, 2, 3, and lastly 4. Cycle through these four rocks and once your inventory is full, walk back and climb up the ladder, bank in Falador East Bank, deposit your iron ore, and repeat the process. 
keep mining the iron ore until you have 256,760 iron ore banked, as this will allow you to make the 51,352 iron plate bodies that you need to go from levels 85 to 99 smithing. You may have the chance to mine gems to cut for crafting XP, and also clue scrolls. If you're looking for something to break up the monotony of iron mining, then doing the clues that you receive are an excellent option. Once you have all your iron ore and rings of forging in the bank, head over to the Edgeville bank, equip your ring of forging, and withdraw 28 iron ore. Walk to the furnace and smelt all of your iron ore and turn them into iron bars. Run back to the bank, deposit all of your iron bars, withdraw 28 new iron ore, and repeat the process accordingly. Make sure that you keep an eye on your ring of forging uses. Each ring of forging gives a 100% success rate to turn your iron ore into an iron bar, and once all 140 uses are depleted, the ring of forging will go away. Make sure you equip a fresh ring of forging right away so you don't actually lose the iron ore when you smelt. Once you have all of your iron bars, go to Varak West Bank. This is the same progression as before like the regular accounts. Withdraw a hammer, 2 energy potions if you like, and 25 of the iron bars, and make sure that the hide roof option is set to off. Click your iron bar, and then click on the anvil just to the south to save a game tick when smithing the iron plate bodies. Click the iron plate body, and your character will start banging them all out. Once that's done, turn your run energy on, click the bank, deposit all your plate bodies, and rinse and repeat the process accordingly. Again, if you have energy potions, you can keep your run on for the whole duration of your smithing training, just be sure to keep sipping on your potion to keep your stamina up. If you train without the energy potions, you're able to make about 620 iron plate bodies per hour, and with the energy potions, you'll be able to make around 750 iron plate bodies per hour. To be perfectly honest, as a free-to-play ultimate Iron Man, you should train 85 to 99 smithing by superheating the iron ore and using the anvil nearby from a few clips ago. If you don't have any nature runes, I'd suggest telegrabbing nature runes with any law runes you have, or go back to killing ogre shamans and warriors for them. I'm only including this option if you truly can't be bothered to train melee, or if you have a level 3 locked free to play ultimate iron man. There may be a better way to go about training smithing for ultimates without superheats. If any of you guys know any better ways, feel free to let me know in the comments and I'll make sure to pin it. I'm going to quickly go through this section, so feel free to pause or slow the video down if you need. You would start by having the best pickaxe equipped, along with a chronicle and your ring of forging. Have a hammer and the best woodcutting axe in your inventory also. Mine your iron ore at the Varrock Southwest Mine until you have a full inventory. You don't need to world hop as the iron ore spawns much faster than you could world hop. Make sure you have 27 wood cutting, then take the dugout canoe just to the south and go to Edgeville. You can also build the Waka canoe if you have the level for it. Smelt your iron ore into iron bars, and once done, chronicle teleport back to the Champions Guild. Head northwest around the Varrock walls and use your iron bars on the anvil to make your iron plate bodies. Chronicle teleport back to Varrock Southwest Mine and repeat the process. Make sure you keep an eye on your ring of forging. If its uses are depleted, you'll need to make a new one before resuming your smithing training. And with that, this video is now concluded. Thank you so much for making it through to the end of the video. Please like this video, subscribe, and ring the bell icon if this video guide helped you. Also, if you would like to join the Fox Den Discord server, the link will be in the description below. Lastly, I do stream live on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook Gaming every Tuesday and Thursday, so feel free to hop in and say hi. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya!